I've got a mesh here that I want to create a turntable with. Um, usually I will turn on wireframe for my uh, color. Same thing as before, I basically want to go into the renderer and establish high quality, high resolution settings. So I'll, I'll basically turn on uh, ambient screen space uh, occlusion, set the samples max to 32. Anti-aliasing, I will set this to 16. So you get nice smooth wireframe. So again, that's uh, under here under renderer in the uh, settings to access that. So these are the two areas that I usually focus on when I'm doing presentation renders for clients or for myself to uh, kind of keep track of my productions. So again, max out my samples uh, for ambient screen space ambient occlusion and max out my samples for anti-aliasing and, and enable both check uh, boxes there. So if you're doing wireframe, it does give you cleaner wireframe. In the case of the high poly stuff that you guys are doing, I am not asking for any wireframe. And so uh, what I will usually do is set my material to be uh, kind of like a fake ambient occlusion where it's sort of uh, more of a, a white and maybe have a little bit of incandescence. So it's, it's sort of going to show really, really well. Um, so it, it just helps me kind of view the surface. So the next step is to kind of frame, just like in ZBrush, you want to hit F to frame or center your object. So if you want a more of a three-quarter view, you can tilt it up. If you want a bit more of a full-on view, you can sort of face it a little more centered. And the next trick, uh, our next step is to go into uh, animation. So switch from modeling to animation. Then go to visualize, create turntable. So in the case of my 24 uh, frames, I want actually 240 frames. So we're working at 24 frames a second by default in the lab. So I want 240 frames for a 10 second turntable. So I'll hit turntable. It's gonna generate this now. I should extend my timeline down here to 240. So down here. And then extend this out so it's the full range. And if we hit play, we can see the turntable now working. Right, so that is perfect. Um, I mean, final steps, if you're doing resolution gate or anything like that, I'll just go back here. Usually I don't want the object selected, so I don't want to see wireframe on top. Uh, next step is to go to play blast. And again, just like before, we can set our, um, you know, I think in this case we have QuickTime installed. I think in future images we will only have AVI available or image-based um, sequences. So if you do an AVI, you will have to recompress it because the files will be really, really large. In this case, I'll just uh, select QuickTime and uh, Photo JPEG is okay. Quality, always 100%. Um, if you want to be safe, you can do custom uh, 1920 by 1080. Scale, always at 100%. I don't want half resolution uh, size uh, turntables. So I'll put this out to the D drive and just call it uh, turntable. And then we'll play blast. Turntable looks good. It's a pretty good uh, presentation render. And as I've said before, if you look at any behind the scenes clips from Blu-rays and movies, um, you'll see a lot of these kinds of presentation renders. So um, very, very useful and very effective. Like I said, it also allows me to see the object. I can pause at any point, skip forwards or backwards. The other nice thing is it's great for a demo reel if you want to just show um, your mesh and it has a continuous loop, it makes it nice and easy to, to, to view as well.